good morning, good morning, good morning. See we are all camera at the moment. Uh, we've, we're at the time when the sunshine is shining, so give it a couple of minutes. The sun will be out of the way in a minute, and then we'll get some light balance here. At the moment, the bright sky is darkening everything else up, so just hold on a minute till the sunshine has moved along a little bit. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Here in Tokyo, it is the eye in the middle of the storm all around the world, all around everywhere. I see chaos. Here it is quiet and peaceful. I'm going to need this in a few minutes. Today. Oops, top secret. Cats, 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 back to cats. Good evening, David. It's good morning, good morning. <coughs> cough, cough, cough. What does furloughed mean? Cut, gone? I don't know. Furlough, furlough. Laid off? Print party done. I'm not sure what you mean, print party done. There are no print parties here for the foreseeable future. The shop itself is also closed. Okay, what's up today? We're going to do some. Uh, we're going to do some color separation stuff. We're back to the cats. We had a little bit of a uh, change the other day. We were working on the microwave. Let's not done that. Too, but there's no point sitting here hammering at you. So back to the cats here, and the cat, this is the evening snow print. The key block was finished some weeks ago. We did the first part of the sky block, and we did the first part of the river block. And when I did those, I mentioned that we kept part of the block in, in, uh, in reserve, because we will almost certainly be using it. And indeed, that's what it has turned out to be. I did the final, final color separation on this print last night. I worked out where we're going to put the gray gradations in the mountains. Dave sat there with Photoshop clicking and clicking and erasing and clicking and erasing. And I got a rough plan worked out for this. And here's where it's going to be. There will be the key block itself. There will be the river block with one gradation in the mountains above it. There will be the sky block. That will have the cartouche and one gradation over at this side keeping things apart. Then there will be another piece of wood and on the front side of this there will be one, two, three, four separate areas for gradations in little parts of these mountains. On the back <coughs> excuse me. On the back side we will have something similar, three other different areas. So there's going to be seven little gradation areas up here in the mountains. And I can do like one, three, five, and seven on one block because they're far enough apart. And I'll do two, four, and six on the other block because they're farther apart. That's what we're going to do today. You'll see me draw those and get those ready today. So the whole print, when we're ready to go, will be three pieces of wood, two sides. But the printing impressions will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 printing impressions, I think, for this block, for this, for this print. Something else to show you before we actually start the printmaking work this morning. Got some photographs. Yesterday, it was Friday afternoon here in Saxa. Friday afternoon, just a normal sunny Friday afternoon. Lots and lots of people are around town. Schools, colleges, they're off, the kids are all out, nothing to do. A bunch of factories actually are closed down. Tokyo still is not like the West, it hasn't closed the city down. But there are lots of businesses like ours that have closed. So I went out yesterday afternoon and took a few pictures of my community here. Let me see if I can find where they are. It'll take me a minute. I was going to set this up before I started the stream, but I didn't have time. So give me a minute here. I will show you a few pictures 
from Asaksa yesterday afternoon. I have to pop up here an image slideshow. One second, please. Just name it here. I'm going to go and find it. Just a second, please. I should have set this up before I uh, before I started the stream. Where is it? It's in my downloads folder. settings on that. One second please. Okay, there. There's our shop on the right hand side there. Hang on a sec. I thought I asked it to give me a... Uh, one second, please. Slide mode. Use hotkeys. Okay. There's the shop. This is the street in front of my place. This is the middle of the afternoon yesterday. My shutter is closed. Somebody's standing in front of me doing something with a phone. And there are people browsing, browsing, browsing. Almost all the people you're going to see here, they're young people. It looks like college-age people and whatever. So I walked down the street. This is the cafe next to me, and it's the Tenton shop on the corner. Lined up to get in. Inside these tiny, tight cafes, the seats are all packed together. These people just don't care about what's going on here these days. Here we are, this is Hopidori. This is 15 seconds walk from my front door. Yesterday afternoon. Welcome to the apocalypse. Here we are, again around the corner. A few more minutes towards Sensoji Temple, Sky Tree in the background. The festivals are up. They're getting ready for the cherry blossoms. It's of course coming up the cherry blossom season. The cherries aren't actually open. On the left hand side of the trees you see there are cherry trees. So they're just starting to come open here. In front of Sensoji Temple itself, crowded. It's not as totally crowded as it is, it is sometimes, but it is still full of people. Here we are, this is looking from Sensoji Temple down through the you know, main, it's Nakamise, down to the main set of tourist shops to come up towards the temple. And of course, whenever you see people, you see uh, street entertainers, and here we are, this is right in front of my shop, down, right in front of Don Quixote, just down the street from my shop. A bunch of street entertainers yesterday. Welcome to Tokyo. What's my point, Grandpa, is just to show people other cities around the world are on lockdown. Tokyo at the moment doesn't seem to care about this. And I'm of, I'm of two minds. There are obviously very few people here infected, but, but, but is this the best way to protect from infections? I have no idea. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an opinion, I mean, whatever. I feel uncomfortable about this, which is why we have closed our own shop, but this is the reality of what's happening in Tokyo, outside. And to finish off, here we are. There are some trees open. This is a kind of a white, pink, a white cherry tree rather than a pink Yoshino. Looks really good. Next week is going to be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Once all the cherry trees are indeed open. If anybody's still alive. Anyway, no political point, just simply that's what's happening in Tokyo right now. Here we are outside my street right now. It's very, very, very quiet, but that's because it's 8 or 9 in the morning on a Saturday morning. Okay, let's now get back to work with that diversion here. Did somebody say, what's your point, granddad? I am a granddad. I got three grandchildren. One more, more coming, perhaps, next year. Who knows?
Okay, here we go. Again, this is the river block, and I kept the mountain area a bit of it in reserve. And it is indeed, I'm going to need this triangular part. And if you can imagine in the actual picture, a lot of it will be white snow, but in these ravines and in these shadows, there will be gray gradations. And inside this shadow here, we will make it into a shadow with a gradation. So that area needs to be kept on this block. this one first and then we'll move ahead with drawing them on the next two. So even though the pigment on this area will be just at the bottom, if you imagine this shape, there will be a dark gradation coming up from the bottom and fading out into nothing. So there will be no pigment touching the top, but we keep the shape as a one-piece thing. If I just cut the wood off where I wanted the pigment to end, then it would, <coughs> it would leave a line in the print. So we cut the wood right to the level of the borders, put pigment just on the bottom part, and we'll get a nice gradation coming up. We'll see next week when we start printing. There's the area. You know, the next job normally on this would be to get my hammer out and cut away all the ones around it. But again, on the stream, there's not much point to be doing that really, really noisy work. So let me put this aside for a few minutes. Put this aside for a few minutes and start working on the next one.
as I said, we're going to have two. It'll be gray number A with one, two, three, four, and gray number B. And I got an image ready for those. Again, this morning before starting the stream, I didn't have time to get all the image prep done. So just another minute while I find another batch of images to bring into the stream here. One second. find these as individuals. Hang on a second. Who is the printer that's going to print these? I'll probably do the first test printing myself and then once we start the edition, I'm really not sure. At the moment things are really quite a lot in flux. We're trying to balance our printers with the subscription prints. So at the moment I can't see who is going to be the free person to do this because we're still a couple of weeks away from printing. So I'm sorry, I don't know. It'll be our normal people. I don't know who, which one. Okay, let me bring up an image here. Now, there's two color blocks. It's going to be gray A and gray B. Let me find the images here. One sec. Image. Gray A. Browse. Here we are. Great. It'll probably come in too big. I'll have to shrink it down. Hang on a sec. Yep, of course. Okay, what this is, it's a printout I made quickly. It's the same thing you see in front of me here. And I've colored in a few of the areas. Okay, you can see what's happening. Top left hand corner, behind the cat's head, there'll be a gray gradation. Left hand cat, middle of his haunches, right hand cat. Back side, far right hand side. So we've got four gray gradations that will be on this block. Let me now find the next one. This is gray A. Let me find gray, gray B. Same thing, it'll come in too large, just to sec, scale it down here. We'll take a look at these, and you can sort of see what we're saying. There's four. Oh, there's four on each. I thought there was seven. There's actually eight. And you can see what we've done. We've just simply spaced them out far enough that when we're printing each one, it won't interfere with the next one. But if you, if you imagine these two all together, there's four gradations here, another four gradations here. The final print will have eight of those gray gradations, plus one at the top in that car area you, you saw me carving. Then there will be more down the front on the river. So my job now is to color these in ready to get started. So tell you, let me just pull it down here. You don't need to see my face for me. Let me get this here. Okay, your job is to watch me and make sure I don't miss anything here. And what I think I'll do, I think I'll do it in yellow and then with a purple for the knockout. Let's do it this way. And again, the piece of wood we leave behind won't just be for the gray, it'll be for the whole mountain area in that place. And the pigment will be a gradation. But we don't want the snow on the trees to be dark. Okay, that's zone one. Zone two.
so on three. Paper is indeed out, John. Thanks for reminding me. There's three people upstairs. Aimi san's paper is out. Kawai san's paper is out. <coughs> Aimi san's working on one of the portraits print back numbers for subscribers. Uh, Kawai san's working on the Samus print in the Ukiwa Hero series. And Lei chan, she's working on two things. She's finishing up number four in this year's subscription series, and she's working on test printing for number five in this year's subscription series. But I got an email from Amy San a few minutes before the uh, stream started. She says, I don't feel well, so please put my paper back in. So once the stream's over, I'll head back up there. I'm going to do some laundry, and I'll put her paper back in. Okay, one, two, three, four. So if you know, we'll, we'll be rubbing a brush here, rubbing a brush here, keeping them separate apart. It's early morning quiet, I think Saturday morning. It's a long weekend here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a long weekend, so it's going to be crowded later on this afternoon, but nobody's out and about at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, let's switch over to the other one. That was gray A. Let's look at gray, gray B. Okay, yeah, she just said, I think she just got a call. You know, Ayumi san has a, a young baby, and uh, she's a mother with a young baby catching all the stuff that's around. So, uh, you know, I mean, people do get normal illnesses here. Okay, let's see this one. So, again, the previous block had this one and this one. So, now we're going to go in between. Sheet of paper. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. What am I doing here? This is the sheet of paper for the other one. Here we go. Under, under, under. I've already drawn on some of the spaces here for the. You see what I've done? I've drawn in some of the spaces for the grey I want on the islands on this one. So put that away from it. That's wrong. It's this piece. Dave, Dave, Dave. What is the large oval area to the left of the cat's face? You mean like as in this area? Well, you tell me it's the design. I think it's the cat's body. That's his tail, obviously. Remember, this is a half a mountain, half a cat. So I think this is probably just mountain, is it? This is the cat's body coming around. The heart, heart surgeon says, oops. No knife. Once you've got your knife in, that's when you're in trouble. No knife yet. <laughs> this is just a piece of paper. It's when you've got the big hammer in your hand. That's when you say, oops, that's when you've got problems. But uh, <laughs> at this stage, no.
It'd be a question how far to bring some of these, you know, that uh, earlier one, for example, this area, it's clearly defined start and finish. This area, even though the gradation would be just at the bottom, there's no line here, but we can cut it there. This one, gradation would be at the bottom. I'm just going to cut it sort of so it fits the shape. So if there's a trace of a shape left over, it won't look unnatural. This one's easy, but some of these, this one, I want a gradation here, but where do we cut the wood? I've got to have the end of the wood. Maybe I'll end up cutting it actually here. If I come too far here, it'll, it'll, it'll um, make it difficult for this guy. Not quite sure where, where, we, where we're going to cut that one. And this bottom one again is a clear one. I might leave these as one piece, you know, for now. I'm going to do a gradation at this point. I'm going to do a gradation here and a gradation here. So I might leave that as one piece altogether. But this one, I'm not sure how far to bring that. If I cut it there, that's too short to make a nice gradation. But if I bring it around here, it'll interfere with this one. So I'm really not sure. Can't do it there, can't do it there. We'll see, that's a question mark. I might need to feather off the block here in this area. So feathering it off, this in this area, just feather off the block. So it doesn't show a strong line. We'll see. Okay, that's those two. Then there was the other one, like I said, which has got the gray on the rocks and stones. So I've messed it up with, with yellow. So let's do this one in purple so we can see what's going on. <coughs> and I don't have a, a copy up here in the corner. I just simply, last night, I just drew this. I sat there looking at the Hiroshige original print. Do we still have that? Here's the Hiroshige original print, and if you look down near the river, for example, on the rocks in the river, there's grey tones. And someplace in the, uh, in the areas of the mountain, right down near the water, there are some shadows that don't actually have gradations in them. So I looked at this last night, carefully checking, 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 here over. And then, just sorted out a bunch of places. So these will be grey tones. And of course, the leftover part will be will, will thus become snow.
I think that's a good thing. But before I paste that down, I want to sit and look at it for a while and think about it, think about it, think about it. Then what's left is the other area on the last block, the sky block. This one, this is going to be the cartouche. And something over here, one more area, I forgot where it was. It, uh, Yeah, it's this one, these two. It's under the cat's chin. And this one. That is our color separation. The bridges, I think, get nothing, I believe. The bridges just get key block and open space. This gray one could, if you like, it could go on the bridge area just to help darken it up. Okay, we can do that. is, I believe, our color separation. So maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. block 17. 17 impressions. Why did I mark the cartouche, the cartouche? Because we're going to do, I'm not quite sure exactly what's going to go in there, but there will be a color in there or something, a tone. If we leave it white, it interferes with the snow nearby. We'll try it. It may end up being white, but I'm going to cut a block for it. Nearly always the MQA cartouches had a color tint or a color tone mm -hmm. in them. You saw we did, right? The sushi cats we did the other day. The sushi cats, right? It had a two tone. I and mean, we won't have a two tone like this into this monochrome print. But we could put uh, maybe a gray blue or something like that into the cartouche. Don't know yet. We'll do some test printing. But I, I'll prepare a block for it so that we have that option. No, no falling snow. I believe no falling snow. My current thinking on this is that in the original Hiroshige, the whole thing was covered with falling snow, but you know, because of the vast scale of this thing, the snow dots are small and we don't it doesn't interfere with it. But on a print this small, if I try and cut dots on here, we can do it, but I think it will just interfere with the mood. It would just have too many open white spots. It would be distracted, like a face with spots all over it, rather than just snow in the distance. So my first feeling on this is we are not going to do falling snow. There will be snow on the ground, and this will be post-snowfall. Current thinking. I have no way to test that, because if we try testing it, we can't go backwards. Okay, let's paste one of these down and get to work.
uh, the sky will be dark, it'll be night, and there will be a gradation at the top. I'm thinking of a two-tone sky, a dark blue, steel, steel gray blue sky, and then with a thin black gradation. What's the original half? Yeah, something like this. I think we'll stick close to the, maybe I'll make the sky a bit darker, I think, a bit of a darker steely blue. No idea, that will all come out in, in test printing. But we're going to keep the same mood as what you see here. Cold, 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 deep blue water, and then a steel gray night, night sky, with a rich black, or black blue at the top of it. And their cartouche is bright red at the top left, right, Nate, but that's because it was a series, and the series had red cartouches. I think a red cartouche on ours would be too, the print is too small, it would be too intrusive, I think. Let's make a tap here. This word is a bit hard. Tap coming up if you got headphones on. I'm going to tap this chisel here. Three, two, one. Oh, we saw the documentary. Thank you. Where did you see that, by the way? I don't know where it's playing these days. That documentary used to be playing in the airlines. That was a year ago, or I guess or so. It was playing in many international airlines, but uh, these days I don't know where you can see it. For a while it was on Netflix here in Japan, but it seems to have disappeared from there. So I'm really not sure where that documentary is visible these days. It was also on Amazon Prime for a while, in English-speaking countries only. So I don't know. Where did you see it? Can you let us know? For the paste here, because it's a flat color block, we don't need the white hard bond glue. A normal light paste will be okay. So we're going to use the same thing, the Arabic, gum Arabic new, the, the glue, the mucilage. Amazon Prime. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that means it's free for most people, right? Most typical Americans. I finally got into here, somebody in America, a fan, a friend, a fan, uh, watched it on Amazon Prime and he had the technical capability to steal it and then sent me a dub. That's the only way I got a copy. I got a copy from that. The producers never did send me a copy. Not licensed for Japan. But I do have a copy now because somebody stole it and sent it to me. It's okay as a documentary. It could have been so much better, you know. If he had come first and interviewed and interviewed and interviewed before filming, or, or made the filming into the interview, that's not what happened. He had a script ready. He knew what he wanted to say. 
So he knew, he thought he knew the story. It was sort of close, but there's so much more it could have been. You know? Whatever. One day, one day. Lots of chances for the story. And if I don't like the way somebody else tells the story, there's always YouTube. What is the title? The title is Sano Art of the Game. The. I don't know if it has a the. It's Art of the Game or The Art of the Game. But also I got confused. Somebody told me that there's different documentaries. There's another documentary called The Art of the Game, and it's about basketball. So, so I hear. So the title alone, I guess you can't copyright titles, so the title alone doesn't tell you what this is. Yeah, VPN, of course, of course, but, uh, you know, so if you're an Amazon member, you have to have both things. But anyway, I've got a copy of it, isn't it? Somebody sent me a, a, a download version of it, so I'm okay for that. I'm not interested in sending me time watching that anyway. But I met the guy already. I know who he is. so much, so much, a couple of years ago, and what was it, in the 2018 or so, when it was playing in the airlines. Every day, every day here in the success, so many people came in. They saw them on the airplane all the way to Japan. Dad says hi. If you mean my dad, I don't really think that's possible, but I'm not quite sure who you mean. Dad says hi. Did I miss part of the you know, part of the conversation up here? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dad showed me a documentary. Okay, I see. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If I know who you're talking about, I don't know. So. Dad says hi. It's much easier to leave a little tag of gumpy to get hold of. I'm not sure what you mean. It's much easier to leave a little tag of gumpy to get hold of. I mean, if I like pulled up one corner, mm, as you see, what I did, you know, uh, you can't run right to the edge because it peels up off the glue. So you saw what I did. I, I pulled off the back, peeled up this way, and then peeled up this way. It's good gumpy, you know? It's good gumpy. This is the stuff we have on the website. We interrupt this program to bring you word from a sponsor. Okay, there we go. Good. Now you know what we're going to do next. What time is it? Okay, 45, halfway through. What time for camera show? <laughs> Cameron won't be shown. Of course, he's at home. For those of you who haven't heard, Cameron doesn't drop by here anymore. Cameron works from home these days. 
Uh, actually, it's for two reasons. I know it's partly, of course, because of the uh, shutting down the shop and no reason for him to come on crowded trains, but also because Cameron's, uh, Cameron's family is expecting, and it's expecting quite soon. So he and I had been preparing and planning uh, to have him work at home, so we've just done that a little bit early. So he's going to be sort of on whatever, sending paternity leave or whatever, and uh, we chat about this yesterday. I think he'll be able to do his normal work and take care of his kids. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. He's one of the cores of our business unit. We've got this production corner upstairs making prints and the outside printers. We've got the shipping center over in Olney where the prints get shipped. I'm physically in the middle. The prints all come to my desk first. I check them, look over, make sure they're okay, trim some of them, then send them to Olme. So I'm the physical guy in the middle. But Cameron is the uh, What's the word? He's the nerve center. All the billing of the stuff goes out from his computer. The payments come in semi-automatically through his computer. He clears everything, sends it through the data through to Ome. Ome's printer on the desk there, the data that Cameron prepared comes out on their printer and they wrap prints up and send them. So Cameron and I do, do, I do the analog thing, check the prints, send them through to Ome for shipping, and Cameron does the digital part, all the paperwork and billing, sends it through to Ome, out for the shipping. So he and I work as collaborators in that whole thing, keep all the system running. The printers work upstairs, all my ships out there, and we're good to go. Even with the shop closed, our main core business, subscriptions, is still running as normal. So, so far we're okay. I know we have lost a huge amount of our revenue because of the shop being closed, but in return for that, I have a whole lot of time to do uh, other things. Speaking of which, today's Saturday, perhaps sometime this weekend, or perhaps Monday morning, You'll be hearing from us with a, an email going out with a bunch of news and stuff and uh, perhaps something might be interesting for you, I don't know, who knows. Ah, oh, you're talking about something different, the gumpy and the copy paper. Yeah, there's that part. I, I paste, maybe there was two peels here. I pasted the whole thing down, then peel up one corner and took away the copy paper. That's easy, that just separates. If you use too much spray glue, they don't separate easily. And as you're peeling up the copy paper, the gumpy gets torn. But you use really, really light, low, low tack. So that the corner peel up is easy, the copy paper comes off. But then it's the gumpy peel, where you're splitting the gumpy paper. That's the one that uh, he, he, he takes some to it. Yeah, I don't think it's a secret. Cameron, Cameron's wife has been expecting for a long time. They're, I think the baby is due next month, about three or four weeks from now, somewhere in the middle of April. I don't think it's been a, a top, top secret. He just, you know, he doesn't talk so much about his own stuff. So for him, I, th I think actually he's kind of lucky. He may be listening to this morning. Good morning, Cameron. Sir. He gets to work at home in a comfortable place, and will take care of his kids, and do a reasonable job, which doesn't involve, you know, uh, too much labor. He can easily get it done in a normal working day, less than a working day. He doesn't have to commute. I think he's, uh, he's actually looking at a really good situation right now. And none of our stuff is so time sensitive. If it turns out he's got to go to the hospital for a few days and not touch his computer or whatever, we're totally okay. I can answer emails from here. <coughs> we're totally fine with it. Having a baby in Japan, it's kind of interesting though. There's, there's plus and minus about it. And all. One really interesting thing about Japan is they have this wonderful, wonderful, uh, there's a national healthcare insurance system. You know, it's, it's national plus companies, whatever, all kinds of stuff built in. It's basically a, a giant system. We don't, we're all insured. We pay insurance premiums, either by ourselves or through our employers. And then we just get the care. We pay a high deductible. Whenever I go to the doctor, I pay 30% deductible, but all that stuff is capped, capped, capped. If, there's, if you've got really bad problems, then you end up not going bankrupt. So it's really, really cool. But long story short, that's the health insurance. It doesn't cover pregnancy. <laughs> it's really kind of cool. For some reason, this is not sickness. You did this to yourself. I don't know. But having said that, there are, the city office does recognize that uh, these families need help with these expenses. So of course, it's, it's covered with a different kind of insurance. Okay, I've got to get some work here. I've got to get some work here. Okay, are we on? Let's zoom in. Oh, am I here? Where am I?
Okay, let's go. And again, at the moment now, this is going to be a gradation, but the wood and the knife doesn't know or care anything about gradations. All we're going to do is cut a shape of wood here that later on the printers will use to make a gradation. Carvers don't know or care about gradations, for the most part. soft. I don't know how long these blocks will last. Get your order in soon before the blocks wear out. I don't know. still bright out there and you can't see that. The camera's not doing well on that. Tissue paper, I don't know, when I was still in Canada years and years ago, I tried using onion skin, I tried using tissue paper, I used all kinds of stuff. It just swells. As soon as you hit with water, it swells. This gumpy doesn't do that. <coughs> this wood wasn't from, yeah, that's exactly right. The key block is one of the old poet's prints, I think. Did we have the poet's blocks here when I started this? No, the key block for this was one of the Yahoo auction blocks. It was that Taisho ear block. I took the center core from it. So this uh, this print isn't being done with one of the old Japanese shoe blocks. The current subscription prints, all the key blocks, are taken from my old Poets blocks. Yeah, you're saying it's expensive and they don't use epidurals. Yes and no. There's lots and lots of support from the community, the city office and stuff, for the medical costs. And as far as epidurals go, my, my wife didn't have a baby in Japan. We had our babies over in Canada. But uh, I think that you perhaps have a little bit of old-fashioned information. I'm not really quite sure. Cameron will be the guy to talk to. He knows more about this. They've already had one baby in Japan, and they're now going to do it the second time. So chat with him about this. He knows much more than I do about it. How is the corona situation in Japan? They have it under control. Who knows? It's a huge mystery. The, the numbers are still extremely low, and yet we were exposed early, of course. We were one of the first countries that got exposed outside of China. There has not been any specific care. They've shut the schools down, but that's about it. Everything else is running pretty much as normal, and I have no idea why the numbers are not running up. I have no idea why the numbers are not running out. 
Is it because of the masks or Japanese people are just super clean washing their hands all the time? I don't know. There is some extremely careless behavior all around me. We showed those pictures at the beginning of the stream here. Why are the numbers not running up? There's very little testing being done, so that's one reason why there's no raw numbers. But having said that, there's also no giant stream of bodies being taken into hospitals. And the Japan Times had an interesting story, it, was, it would have been this morning, if you go to japantimes.co.jp, whatever, uh, in a story about this, it said, and I'm just quoting, roughly remembering what it's in the newspaper, normal pneumonia deaths, like influenza pneumonia deaths, are also way down this year. It said, I'm just repeating what was in the news report this morning, because there had been a fear that actually there's a low level of corona deaths, but what could be happening is Lots of old people are dying from pneumonia. Really, it's corona, but they're, they're logging it as, as pneumonia. But even normal pneumonia deaths are apparently way down this year in Japan. Why didn't you come up there? What's just this area here? What am I doing? So I don't know. If you want stats and stuff about it, how many people have been tested, how many people have caught it, how many people have died, etc., in Japan, the Japan Times Company, the newspaper here, English language newspaper, is running statistics pages and information pages and news pages on the Japanese situation in English. Japantimes.co.jp, I guess, is their is the URL. And that company, that's not one of the typical Japanese media things that really, really toes government lines. The Japan Times is a bit, uh, is a bit hostile to the establishment here. So if anything, if, you, if you're worried about the media numbers being true or whatever, those guys are, are going to be trying to get to the bottom of it. So. But no, I don't have an answer to that question. Where are all the cases in Japan?
Was that a dollar? I think so. Good, the light balance is coming back on the outside channel. Good. The sun has moved around enough to take out the brightness out of the lens. So. That's quite a fair time. That sound these days very much anymore. It's almost disappeared from the sucks of that sound. Suitcase rolling down the street on the way to the airport. These morning streams used to be full of that sound.
Is that still up there? I think I wasn't able to get that from Japan here. The Tubi link, T-U-B-I. That works for some people in some areas and some people it doesn't. You've got to do the VPN thing if you want to figure out how to watch it for some people. So let's see, maybe the link will work, maybe not. Thanks for LinkedIn, if it works. Thank you. I think that's very much region controlled. Over. Get another sheet. Do the back side. We'll do our tap again. If you've got headphones on, we'll be making a loud tap here. Countdown. Three, two, one. Was that enough warning? I don't know. Can I do that? I should turn my sound off when I do that. Does that help? Is that better? I don't know. That's the kimono shop next door getting set up. They still have business. As you saw, those photos I showed you from yesterday, any number of people walking around town in the kimono getup. <coughs> Their normal business is uh, maybe, I don't know, X percent, half half uh, young Japanese people doing the getup and tourists doing the getup. Their business is obviously impacted by the lack of foreigners, but there are no shortage of young Japanese couples who rent the kimono there and prance around town, get their picture taken, take a ride in the rickshaw carts. Their business is still up and running. I mean, I'd been thinking they'd be shutting down like me, but uh, no. thing you know this part of it actually is really important how much glue how much liquid on the surface of the wood here if I put too much glue here if 
I put too much glue here, the nut gumpy is still wet. When I try and peel it off, it pulls away from the wood while I'm peeling. If I don't put enough, <coughs> excuse me, if I don't put enough glue, then of course it peels up because it's not strong enough. It's got to be Goldilocks. And I don't have any way to tell you in words how much. It's just the right amount of glue. Experience. Just you're gonna have to just try it and fail and try it and do okay and try it and fail and whatever. This is also important. Get it down firmly. That glue has now penetrated the gum peak not so far as to go right through to the back. Too much glue, the glue penetrates the gum beat, goes right through and gets on the yellow paper as well. Here we go. So earlier on the stream here, Mr. FFFFF, right? He said leave one corner uh, separated so you can peel it up. We've got that right here. Bingo. There's your corner. This is now the backing paper. It's falling away. Don't peel it straight up, pull it away. That was the low tack spray glue. And let's do it again. Oops, I got glue on the back of my fingers. Now this is right at the edge, there's no room here. Let's go a bit more room here. Cross grain. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Try and work, if you muck up the edges, look at this, it'll peel off the edge, it'll start to peel the whole paper. So at the edges, push off the edge, off the edge. That's why I don't peel here. Off the edge, and peel it back. I swear we could use this again, you know. Absolutely, we could use this again. We could dry this off, use spray glue, put it down onto something, make a copy of it, paste it down. We could use this again. And it's ready to cut. is they're pulling parts of the image off the block rather than just the paper. The peel you saw me doing was, was the gumpy paper splitting. Nearly all Japanese washi, when they rock it, they rock it, they rock it, it forms layers. So what looks like a single sheet of paper, here, if I find it here, the paper before, here. Put the paper before the whole process. This is the same stuff that you, it's this. You saw me lay it down and peel it. It looks like a sheet of paper, but actually it's layered. It's just so crazy. You wouldn't ever think of it. I can't sit here right now and pick this and peel this apart. Some thick papers do that. This is just too thin. But once it's glued on, you can rub from the back and it just, like as you saw it, peels up. This is the same paper. This is now, whatever, half of this sheet or two thirds of this sheet, whatever it is, I don't know. Japanese gumpy paper, just fam. Fantastic stuff. I tell you, I could use this again. You should try it. Let's put it in here. Cut a piece next time I'm doing an experiment. Let's try using it again. Save that for later. I can't find this one. 
already gone. It's not high risk, it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, the other thing too, you know, after I pasted that down, I peeled it off to make things really sharp and crystal clear. But if you've got a couple of things, if the image on your paper is nice and dense and dark, so that it shows through the back, you don't need to do that last peel. And also, if, even if you don't want to peel, look, here's a part that wasn't peeled. If you, when you're carving, if you get a little bit of Camellia oil or light machine oil or something and just lightly rub the back of the paper The thing goes transparent and lines that were on the front show through now You don't rub the whole thing and get carving because the moisture or the or the, 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 the It's not moisture because it's not water. It's oil, but the wetness will start to spoil the glue So this peel is an option for me. It's a no-brainer because look how clean and sharp it comes up but you don't have to do that. The gumpy is thin enough, you can carve from the back. And you're just dabbing a bit of oil, bit by bit by bit, as you go. And having that oil there, actually, too, it's nice when you come to carve those lines because of the oil. The, the knife even slides through a little bit more cleanly. Here, let's put some oil in one of these places that I'm not going to carve. Here. It looks like there's just nothing on. There you are, bare wood. Look at that. I mean, give me a break. There's no system in the world here. That's actually a thin, thin piece of gumpy. There's still gumpy there, but it's mostly what you're seeing is toner. It's incredible. There's no way you get a sharper, clearer design for it. For, for carving than this. It's the world's best system. Easy peasy. If you've got a piece of gum peel. Okay, there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Next step, what is it? Saturday morning. Okay, uh, there's no specific show and tell. I haven't been buying anything these days. We have cut back on all non-essential purchases whatsoever. And with the shop closed, the only things I'm buying these days are if I see a real bargain that comes up that I think I will need later on. So it's not going to be a whole lot of brand new uh, antique type show and tell. As I mentioned yesterday, I really should try and get myself organized and pull down from the collection upstairs a small item to show you each day. And actually that organization is going to be happening. Kitasan, one of the shop girls, rather than just laying everybody off and cutting everybody off, we've asked her to repurpose her job. She's coming starting next Monday and she's going to work in my little room upstairs with my personal collection. We are going to start to get things sorted out and cataloged. I wrote some database uh, a front end software for her last night. And she's going to start to get the stuff into the database. And then once that's set, we'll bring the rest from Ome here, I guess, and we'll do that. And get our collection cataloged, scanned, and get a bunch of it online. Start the long, long process of getting that built up. And she'll start that on Monday. So uh, with her digging in the boxes and finding what's in there, there'll be lots and lots of chance for stuff to say, oh my god, look at that, I haven't seen that in years. Let's bring it down and show people on the street. Does this lamp setup have a name? No, it's a flask and a bulb. I don't, uh, nothing. It's also, we've got some green growing back in here again. Look at this. <laughs> okay, I'll be back on Monday morning and you know exactly what I'll be doing here. See you Monday morning, two days from now. And please, everybody, what can I say? Please take care, take care. I have no idea where this is going to go. No, whatever, nothing I can add to the information here. We're going to try and be responsible here. I hope you guys take care of yourself. We can get out of this thing as soon as possible. See you in a couple of days. Thank you again. Yeah, I'll do the usual thing. I'll pop the outside scenery up. I'll leave that for five minutes. I gotta go to the bathroom and get a cup of coffee. I'll leave the outside view up for a few minutes before I shut it down. See you next time.
Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks. See you Monday morning. Thanks for hanging around. Bye-bye.